Okay, so today we shall continue with. Uh, we'll look into the basic structural component a little more because certain things were left yesterday, and then we'll subsequently go on to structural subassemblies, right? So yesterday, if we go back to yesterday, so what we have uh, looked into are the basic structural components: is the rolled steel sections plates and then uh, uh, different kinds of stiffeners right we have uh, seen hatch and beams hatch side girders then uh, we just initiated talks about brackets because that is also one of the basic structural component bracket here i have made a small sketch wherein you can see this uh, this particular sketch of course i mean it is a section at the midship, right? A section at the midship of a general cargo carrier, or it can be referred to also as a midship section. Of a general cargo carrier, right? Or dry cargo carrier. <coughs> Those details we will see little more so later on. But what we see here is this particular member, a stiffened panel you can see, I have drawn it little curved. There is some purpose for making it curved. This is basically the main deck, right? This is the main deck of the general cargo carrier. Here I have another deck in between. This is the twin deck or also referred to as lower deck right say lower deck right and then you have here another platform kind of a thing you can see a horizontal platform that is referred to as inner bottom plating we started with basic structural component. I said we will talk about brackets, but we have not yet reached to the bracket. Let us first sort of uh, describe what are these items, then again we will come back to bracket. This is referred to as inner bottom plating, inner bottom or inner bottom plating, also referred to as tank top. This particular top is tank top or inner bottom plating or also inner bottom. If that is inner bottom, then obviously this is outer bottom, right? Or bottom shell. More frequently, it is referred to as bottom shell. Obviously, this is my side shell. Right? So now <coughs> we can see <coughs> that the main deck is stiffened by angle sections. These are angle sections. Twin deck or the lower deck is also stiffened by angle sections, <coughs> right? Similarly, your tank top and the bottom shell are stiffened by angle sections. And on the side shell, we can see that there are vertical two such vertical things I have drawn, right? These are essentially side shell frames right so here is also one side shell frame here is also another side shell frame just to distinguish between these two this lower one is called hold frame or main hold frame and this is called twin frame or twin deck hold frame whatever just to differentiate. Now you see these longitudinals or these stiffeners in the main deck or the lower deck or bottom shell they are basically longitudinals as you can see here because this is a section 
at somewhere around the mid length. So, it is a transverse section. So, all the members here we are seeing some of them are running longitudinally. So, this obviously your deck plate, the shell plate and these stiffeners in the deck and the shell plate are running longitudinally. So, we can say that the decks are longitudinally stiffened, longitudinal framing has been adopted, right. Whereas, the side shell, these are in the transverse plane, is not it? They are the, they are transversely framed, side shells have been transversely framed, right. So, these, these are also stiff enough, they are also, well, I can use angle section, right. Here you can see I have put a dotted line here, one form line, another dotted line. What that indication of the dotted line? It indicates that the flange is on the other side. It is a flanged. If I do not put the dotted line, just make a make a uh, sort of. If I make a section like this, suppose you have the side shell. You have the deck, right? and you have the twin frame, if I just draw like this, it implies it is a flat bar. The moment I put a another double line here, it implies that it is either an angle section or a bulb section and flange is looking at me facing this, means perpendicular to this plane upwards, right. If I draw the same thing in this fashion, please do not draw this, I am just showing you because on the above it will be facing this side, bottom it will be facing the other side, it never happens, right. Just using the same drawing I am showing you. If it is dotted, it obviously means it is a flanged, it can be either a bulb section or angle section and the flange is downwards as if, right. Well, whether it is angle or flange that will be made known by when the scantlings are written. Suppose it is written like this, right. Say it is written like this, then it implies that it is a angle section. If it is written like this, it is a bulb section, okay. So, this dotted line or this form line, it has a significance, okay. All right. So, it is done in this way means I show that the flange is on the other side. Now, we have been talking about the basic structural components. One of them is the bracket. Yesterday, we talked about the load part. That means, whatever load is coming on the deck, whatever loads are coming on the deck, this is the, it can be weather load, it can be deck load, anything you are keeping on the deck or some equipment you are keeping on the deck. Here in the twin deck, the loads are nothing but, it is a load of the cargo, there can be some cargo inside, right. So, all these loads and the load due to its own weight, structural weight, right, etcetera. Finally, at the end, it should get supported by the buoyancy, is not it? It is floating. So, the buoyancy forces are acting. Okay. So, it should get supported by the buoyancy. So, whatever load, that load must get as far as possible evenly distributed over the entire hull girder. This particular term is used, hull girder that is nothing but the hull and the hull is taken equivalent to that of a gutter. Gutter we have seen, what is it? It is a longitudinal stiffening member of higher scantling, we refer to it as gutter, right. And generally hull, a ship hull is referred to as hull gutter, why? Because as if the ship is a slender beam. Right. So, that is how that name, it is just a conventional name, hull garter. Anyway, so the load should get 
evenly distributed such that it gets supported properly by the binary ports. So, to do that, that means suppose we, we take a look at, at this corner, what do we see that the load is coming here. Let us assume the connection is like this, okay, maybe make another drawing. Let us see the corner part only. This is my part of the part of the side shell. This is my deck plating, main deck, right? This is welded. Right? Side shell is little, little more projected upwards. It's welded. Now, for some reason, I have my main deck longitudinally stiffened. So, I have stiffeners like this. I am assuming that it is stiffened by angle section. It can be bulb section also, but not T section, either angle or bulb. Generally, not flat bar because you need sufficient strength there. So, flat bar, if I take the flat bar scanning would be very big which is not what file. If the scanning becomes big of the deck stiffeners, then what happens? This clear room becomes less, is not it? The clear space, you need a clear space for cargo stretch. Anyway, so we are now looking at the, at this joint. So, it is like this and the side shell is stiffened by a it is transversely stiffened. It is also an angle section connected to the side cell like this. That means what? It is welded here, right? Now, let us think of the how the load is getting transmitted. Say some load is acting here definitely. If not anything, the weight of the structure itself. So, it appears as a cantilever, is not it? So, the enter load as if is coming getting uh, supported at this joint only as if if you think of the entire shell plating of the deck it is like that only at places it is fully connected between the hatch openings when the hatch openings are there it is just a cantilever plate the plate in line with the hatch opening is a plate cantilever isn't it the deck plating so, it needs proper support such that the load gets transmitted to the side shell. So, that can be done very well if I can provide a good connection between these two. So, what I do? I put a piece of plate like this. So, this is another piece of plate I put there and weld it to the web of the side shell frame, welded to the web of the deck longitudinal. This is a longitudinal stiffener. Since it is fitted at the deck, I call it deck longitudinal. It gets a name, so I can identify easily. Then this part I welded to the deck. So, what has happened now? That whatever load is coming, it is getting very well distributed to the side shell right? and eventually to the bottom shell which is supported by the your uh, buoyancy. Right? So, this is what is a bracket, this is a very important function. It looks very trivial, but very important function. Now, so the bracket what should be its dimension, what should be its strength because it is it is it's, it's actually being subjected to a substantial loading you can see. So, even the bracket may fail because of the load. So, how to increase the stiffness or the strength of the bracket? I provide a flange here. I provide a flange here that is the bracket edge is flanged the way the stiffness they have a flange, similarly the bracket plate 
has a flange. You see, this flange is looking at me upwards. Obviously, not that side because it will fall with that. Or even if I make it that side, the other side, it will be cut at this edge. Otherwise, it will fall. In any case, it can be put either facing up or facing down. So, I provide a flange. So, the stiffness of this plate across this section increases. So, because of the compressive loading, the loading is coming from this side, buoyancy force is pushing up. So, you are as if the bracket is under compressive load. So, it will not fail if I provide a, a flange here. So, depending on where you are putting the bracket, what kind of load may come, either you have a flanged bracket or you can have an unflanged bracket, whatever. So, that is what is the main function of this bracket. Now, this same same thing could have been done in this fashion also. Just take a look. You, you have uh, this and uh, the side shell frame I extend it like this. That means, it is a another piece of plate as if the frame has got sort of extended like this. That means, another piece of plate, I put it exactly fitting that gap, where the side shell has end stiffener, side shell frame has ended. From that, I put a bracket like this. The essence is as if the side cell stiffener has become, edge has become enlarged. This also serves the same purpose because my purpose is to provide a suitable load path that is going. But obviously, this one is, this one is preferable putting a bracket like this which is overlapping the flange, overlapping the side shell stiffener compared to this. Structurally, this is better. This option structurally is better, but from production point of view, this is much difficult, much difficult compared to this particular one. Okay, let us see why this is structurally better. Maybe both of them we can keep, they are visible, yes. What happens in such case, this particular corners, they become little vulnerable, these corners. What happens, it has been observed that from these corners, crack may occur, right. So, what is done is, these corners are generally cut, that means the bracket shape could be like this instead of instead instead of a sharp corner edge instead of that like this like this, this corner, this corner has been cut because this sharp pointed corner here you have stress concentration and cracks may originate, right. Whereas, if I have a connection like this, that problem is not there, the entire problem altogether is eliminated. Here I have reduced the problem, this angle was much more acute. I have made the angle much wider. That is how I have reduced the stress concentration. Here that is eliminated. So, there is a better solution structurally, but from production it is not so. Can you tell me why? What is the so great difficulty if I do this in production or what is the great benefit in this? 
Yeah, simple. What happens? Here the size it should fit perfectly. That means you have to cut a plate which will fit perfectly. If it doesn't fit, if it falls short here, you can't weld. Or you weld there, it falls short at this edge, you cannot weld, the entire purpose is lost. And to get it perfectly done, matching is difficult. Why difficult? Because the size of the vessel, this depth could be say 20 meter depth, the entire depth of the vessel. So, you are gradually building up and this bracket size could be say 300 by 400 millimeter. This is 400 millimeter, this is 300 millimeter. 400 against 20 meter is nothing. So, when you gradually erect the side shell and at the top your this bracket is coming, there can be some discrepancy of 5 millimeter. 5 millimeter in 20, milli, 20 meter length, 20,000 20, millimeter is nothing. But 5 millimeter here gap, it cannot weld, right. So, alignment problem becomes very severe. Here you have no alignment problem whatsoever, right. So, this is always a very better way of doing things, I mean where this is not, this gives a production problem, right. In this, you, you have a, I mean that alignment problem is not there and well it serves your purpose well. To improve situations, this corner is sniped corner is cut, it is not that after welding you cut it, you make the bracket like this, cut it and fit it, right. You may have observed here at this corner, there is some small notch I have made, here also when I have drawn I have made a small notch like this, you know what is that, why that has been provided, can you guess? But, uh, but, but here I have not done on the left side. So, that sharp corner is not creating as such any problem, it creates some other problem. Yeah, some welding problem. So, what happens is, you see again, these are uh, small details when you have the, this, this is, this is my uh, well, uh, suppose this is my that angle section. So, what it will be done? It will be welded here and welded means it will have metal deposition like this, is not it? Bo both sides, right. And now, if I put a bracket If I, if I, if I, if I put a, put a bracket which has this corner, right. So, this corner will foul because in the, in the general, uh, when, when I am making the drawing, then I can see this deck plating, the deck plating is there and the longitudinal is there, right. Welding is a small part there, very small. This longitudinal depth could be say 300 millimeter, could be 400 millimeter, could be 100, anyway that depends on what big vessel and what size. So, let us assume this is a 300 millimeter deep, but what is the size of this welding, that, that small amount of metal which has been deposited. This size may vary anywhere between 5 millimeter to 10 millimeter only, this, this length, that is very nominal, right. So, that may not figure as such in the general drawing, but when you make the details, then it will become visible, right. So, when you make the, this bracket you, because the bracket drawing is needed, the one thing is there here, you cannot really do anything without a drawing. You have to give the drawing, the drawing goes to the shop floor and accordingly the plate is cut because these brackets 
they are nothing but flat plates and to provide necessary strength I may provide a flange here that flanging can be the edge can be bent just by bending the edge I, I provide a flange it is something like this straight way. So, this plate is having a flange right or I can weld a piece that is also feasible. So, in any case drawing is needed. So, in the drawing and this cutting will be done these days uh, virtually in all shipyards you have a uh, so called uh, uh, NC flame cutting machine numerical control flame cutting machine. So, all this will be programmed you put the plate and it will be cut to the required size and shape etcetera. So, there you will have to show this small cut out right. So, that is how what happens that this plate will have a small cut out here right. So, the bracket corner will be like this. What radius? How much you cut? So, it is actually this part you have cut it out right. As I have said when a welding is done suppose you have a plate there is another vertical plate it is being welded this weld is referred to as fillet welding this is referred to as fillet right this dimension what is it any idea this is referred to as leg length. leg length right and this particular dimension along the mid plane this is referred to as throat thickness throat thickness. So, how much this leg length will be or how much the throat thickness will be throat thickness and leg length they can be they are related they are related is assuming that this fillet is a uh, isosceles triangle right. So, anyway generally the leg length is given how much the leg length will be that depends on depends on what thickness of the individual components are being welded. Obviously, the thicker the ind individual components more is the leg length because leg length gives you the bearing area because what are the loads that may come one of the loads that make worst kind of load that may come is like this is not it or even well worst could be even this. That means, this particular plate is pushed in that side and the plate which is welded to this is pulled from that. So, you will have a tearing action. So, the failure mode would be where there can be shear failure along this or a tensile failure here which is probable shear obviously because your your uh, the failure stress needed is much less right. So, it can be a shear failure here if the loading is like this then it will not be even a shear failure it may fail somewhere here along this along this direction right. Anyway this welding will be both sides done whatever. So, such that this it does not fail it should have necessary leg length proper leg length ok. Now, the question is how much is the leg length just a sort of a thumb rule is thumb rule is that 0.7 the thickness of the thinner one the thinner component. Here as I have drawn this is thicker than this right. So, the leg length will be 0.7 thickness of the thinner one say if the thinner plate is 10 millimeter thick out of this this is 10 this is say 16 then I take 0 0.7 of 10. So, leg length becomes 7 millimeter 
let us assume here I am doing a welding of 7 millimeter. So, how much this should be kept? These are very small trivial things, but it leads to very big uh, what? I mean very very significant implications it can have that you have learned slowly through experience. Here I, I see that if this plate is hardly 10 millimeter thick, then the leg length becomes 7 millimeter. And I say that I cut it off this corner because otherwise it will foul. This corner will foul with that fillet. If it fouls, then the bracket won't fit properly, isn't it? So I cut it off. So how much I should cut cut off? What what, what should be the radius of this? Ah, not 0.8 millimeter. Say 8 millimeter. Maybe 0.8 millimeter is very infinite. I mean, very small. 0.8. Here I am saying it is. Let us assume the leg length is 7 millimeter. So, if I say keep a radius of 10 millimeter is more than enough, it does not foul, but generally a radius of around 50 millimeter is kept. 50, 5, 0, much more. You have hardly say 10, 12, 14, 15 leg length, not more than that generally in, in such structures, whatever the thickness will come. But you keep a generous opening of 50 millimeter, I mean 50 millimeter radius. That means I give a substantially big cut. You know why? Can you guess? Why is such a big? No, no, there, there is no question of any more fouling and, and, and after, after I, I put it, well, you mean to say if it is 7 and if I keep only 8, there can be some mismatch, it can foul. Okay, in that case, I could have had kept 14, double it, 15 in, in for a 7, I keep a 15 millimeter, instead I am keeping 50 millimeter, much more. That means, it indicates that it is not only the case of fouling that I have solved by cut by giving a cut here, but there is other necessity that means accessibility to this small corner accessibility is needed. Because what happens after you have you have fabricated the structure, you have to paint everywhere, you have to apply paint, anti-corrosive paint and all that. Uh, otherwise, the structures will corrode. So, if I do not have access here, how do I paint that small part, that small weldment there? And not only that, you see, if I draw it in a more, little more enlarged, possibly it will be. Say your, this is your stiffener. And here, I am giving, giving a cut, maybe a different color would have been better. This is how, this is how it is going, right. So, what I am saying that I am welding it here, I am welding it there, is not it? And here, I have a fillet. whose dimension is something like this. Right? So, I have enough space. You know why? Because then I can put my, firstly, I can paint this region. I can apply paint, so that it does not corrode. Secondly, think of this, these two corners. What is there? It is just a gap, small gap will be there, is not it? Because this is a, I am just drawing a part of it, this is a plate, this is a bracket, is not it? The bracket, bracket has a kind of a thickness. Say the bracket is, well, 12 millimeter thick. 
that means at these corners it is only 12 millimeter there it is welded from this side may be welded from the other side also but what about here it is a 12 millimeter plate like this right this small area it is welded 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 from the other side also both the sides are welded but this small area here here there will be a, if i keep it unwelded means what there will be a very minute gap will remain which may not be that visible as such but a physical gap a physical gap remaining means what moisture will condense there lead to will form a galvanic cell right and we will start corrosion and if corrosion starts then what happens it will propagate corrosion starting means what it is reducing the strength locally as the material is getting wasted right and the structure is under all kinds of lo loading so that may lead to a small crack formation and under the surface loads if a crack is formed in a structure the crack will propagate it's bound to propagate that is the characteristics of a crack in a ductile material it will propagate because once the crack has formed and the loading conditions are not changed crack will propagate because at the first place it has got formed if it has formed means further the strength has gone down from the structure because wherever a crack has formed a enlarged crack is nothing but something like this in a plate i'm just saying a enlarged that means there is a tip very sharp tip right a sharp tip means here you have very high level of stress concentration so automatically it will go on propagating leading to failure total failure total detachment of the bracket if the bracket gets detached your entire purpose is lost of the bracket there is no more this load path is working so this small corner is very important that means how much you are cutting such that you have enough space so that you can insert the electrode and weld this part you understand you are not only welding here not only welding on the other side but also welding this so you are blocking it no moisture can go in no galvanic cell is formed no corrosion and also you provide suitable painting accessibility so a bigger opening is cut so this is called this 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 kind of cuts are referred to as scallop scallop right so you should give a well radius accessible scallop such that necessary welding can be done there necessary painting can be done right so that is what is the bracket now let's go on to the structural sub assemblies now we we had been talking about the basic structural components now sub assemblies okay sub assembly now what is the sequence of overall production how do we see it the sequence of production is something like this say plates and profiles plates and profiles means nothing but what we have talked about the plates and the sections rolled steel sections and from the plates we have cut the plates in small small pieces from the brackets wherever we needed a fabricated uh, stiffener or fabricated uh, profile we have cut it to the required size of the wave and flange welded that is a fabricated section so this is my initial uh, as if well some of the activities are there upstream also now as if we are starting from here so we have the plates and profiles 
then from this we put small components of plates and some profiles we get sub assemblies. These can be that means, we assemble some of these plates and some of the profiles together and make small three dimensional structure or maybe two dimensional structure. So, which can be referred to as sub assemblies put some of these sub assemblies together obviously, we get assembly. I mean that is how we are basically trying to segregate different types of structural components. These are all structural components because my final component is nothing but the full shape or the full platform offshore platform. Prior to that everything is a component at different stages of finish. Here it is one stage of finish, this is another stage of finish right. So, assembly then few of the assemblies put together gradually the things are growing you see here you had only uh, well we will draw that they are referred to as unit putting some of the units together it is referred to as blocks. right put the blocks together i get the final product obviously this just for the sake of showing the flow i have shown but actual material flow doesn't take place like this it will be well depending on proper uh, material will actually flow of course but it is not that it starts from here takes a turn and goes back not that right. But obviously, material will flow from this section to this section from this to this from assembly to unit unit to block block to this ok. What it is basically here I mean if we try to see these are essentially plates of different sizes cut right and your angles, bulb sections and so on and so forth of required safe size and also here you will have uh, facilities for bending it, for giving a, a required curvature. Then, then it comes here, there the sub assemblies, sub assemblies means well say, say a, 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 a small sub assemblies like this some particular uh, other sub assemblies could be like this that means flat plate with stiffeners other sub assembly could be a curved panel with stiffeners <laughs> right these are small sub assemblies right then assemblies i mean these are smaller assemblies sub assembly same thing here bigger ones much bigger ones that means some of the several assemblies put together you are getting assembly say assembly a deck assembly right a side shell assembly that way so, that also can be flat panel or a curved panel right. Then 
these sub assemblies put together you get unit some unit could be like this let us you know what is this well if we go back to this bottom part I have drawn this bottom part that means there is a bottom shell inner bottom shell right. So, this is made up of this flat assembly the tank top assembly the bottom shell assembly this curved part this curved part is named as bilge this is referred to as this is referred to as or termed as bilge plate it is curved there right. So, anyway this is a unit this unit has a name it is called double bottom unit. So, there can be se separate such units then these units you put together side shell unit deck unit all those things and we come to the so called blocks. these blocks put together I have my shape. right what are these what are these blocks or if I go back from the final product to this. So, it is somewhat like this you have the with reference to that of a vessel a ship this is my suppose let us suppose a simple ship like this there will be many other things we are just looking at uh, only on the primarily the steel structure. So, it can be divided in separate in, in, in several not only compartments, but components as if those components again will depend on the, the number of bulkheads you have and all that. So, these could be block number 1, this is block number 2, block number 3 and so on and so forth. So, the way I have drawn here maybe you cut it off 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 there are 8 blocks right. So, this can be a block by itself. stern block, engine room block right, then say block 3, say block 2 and then say the forward block put the blocks together you have the entire ship, you have the so called accommodation block. Right. So, whole purpose of showing you this is nothing but to show we have been talking about the basic structural components, then we have come to the structural sub assemblies. So, we are here sub assemblies, right? Structural sub assemblies. This we have seen now we are here. Further, we will progress like this. Some of them will talk, right? The whole concept is that you go on assembling and gradually you get the shape. In it, the difference with civil construction is that the building is built at one place you bring all the material there, but here it can be built at different locations and it moves you can move the thing it is not that at one location everything will come and you build 
you you make the self assembly the whole self assembly move it to a station where you do the assembly the whole assembly then you transfer where you get the units say a double bottom unit a wing tank unit all right anyway so this is the general flow pattern of the sequence of production how the sequence is going on and of course to all these major main activity you will have various inputs or various other things because in between your pipes will come in between your cables will come in between your equipment will come your machinery will come right so many things anyway so this is basically the concept obviously depending on the facilities one has in a shipyard <coughs> will depend whether he will what size of block what size of unit what size of sub assembly is going to handle because if you do not have facility of handling this entire block entire block means it's becoming as we are progressing from the stage 1 to the final stage gradually the weight of the units individual component being handled is increasing so you'll have to have proper facility to handle that right so thereby it controls that how much you are going to uh how much you will follow this this entire operation is referred to as prefabrication 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 you are prefabricating it like the example i said in the building instead of bringing one one brick if i prefabricate the entire wall elsewhere and just erect it it's a different scenario altogether production scenario right same thing here instead of doing this way i could have done everything at one place i erect a stiffener then bring the plate weld it there right so it's a kind of prefabrication is being done so what extent of prefabrication you will do will depend again on the shipyard facility obviously so this sub assemblies uh we have come to the structural sub assembly what it is primarily is the sub the primarily the sub sub assemblies can be divided into into your uh flat stiff end panels right or curved stiff end panels there is the basic two right they would be both this flat or curved stiff end panel would be either longitudinally framed or transversely framed that means either longitudinal framing system will be implemented or transverse framing system will be implemented right so this flat and curved stiff end panels so what are these many thing decks right tank top bottom shell side shell then what else bulkheads right still continuing um bilge right bilge bilge plate there's a curved shell then internal uh that there can be in bulk area we will see it 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 has uh, um internal uh, partitions i mean internal structural uh, arrangement such where uh, sloping bulkheads there will be something called sloping bulkhead right well the floors <laughs> yeah 
floors there is some concept called floor right so in this way like this you will have primarily the sub assemblies will be the decks various decks the tank top if there is a double bottom this is what is referred to as double bottom this part is referred to as double bottom because this is my inner bottom this is the outer bottom that is how double bottom right. So, this tank top plating, the bottom shell plating, the builds, the side shell, the decks and there can be some sloping bulkheads or and, and, and also the bulkheads, the flat plates, transverse bulkheads, these bulkheads. In the accommodation region, you will have non watertight accommodation bulkheads, they are basically the partition bulkheads because you will be forming the cabins etcetera, right. So, all these are all these they form the sub assemblies. Then there is something called floor. Floor is a concept uh, here in this region. This, this I was trying that time. This we will see later, I mean in the next class again. <laughs> Say it's what I am drawing here is this particular item is referred to as floor this entire thing this is referred to as floor conventionally we understand floor is some something in the horizontal plane right here it's a vertical plane this is a plate this entire thing is a plate in this vertical transverse plane in this transverse plane this is a plate and this green this lines I have drawn there nothing but such type of openings are there. Here is a circular opening here I have a elongated opening that is all. This dotted lines nothing but there are some kind of stiffener stiffening this plate right and this black angles they are the tank top longitudinal there is the bottom longitudinal right. So, you will have openings in this floor plating like this because this longitudinals will pass through that opening is not it longitudinals are continuous and your floor plate is only a plate in the transverse plane that means the longitudinal members will intersect these floors. So, this is referred to as a floor we will we'll talk about this in the next class what are the significance of these floors, what are the different types of floors, why they are provided and why these holes and why the stiffeners right ok.